Welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast, strategies that help entrepreneurs build reputable and profitable brands. Here's your host, Henry Kaminsky Jr. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another Brand Doctor Podcast episode for you guys. We are also going to do this via Facebook Live. So we will have some um, guests on Facebook chiming in, asking questions. Um, and participating in this episode. I have an awesome, awesome guest today. Um, I have been on a mission to get more uh, female entrepreneurs uh, on the show. And you, I've just met so many amazing women the past couple, uh, the past week by interviewing um, a lot of you guys. And I have to tell you, I'm truly inspired and it's just amazing how much you learn from guests and their entrepreneurial journeys. I, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I may, I may do an episode just on the recap of the amazing women that I just interviewed this week. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you guys an amazing guest who has just an amazing journey. And I told her, you, we got to come on the show. You got to share this story with us. Um, uh, Welcome to the show, guys. Monica Klein from Identity Management. What's going on? Hello. How are you? I'm doing awesome. You're looking like a movie star today. You know? <laughs> Thank you. By <laughs> that, I usually do this with you and like straight from the gym, have a shower jet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Monica's one of my. For those of you guys who. who are wondering, Monica is one of my brand accelerator clients and we're in the process of building out her brand um, and really taking her whole business to the next level. I'm super excited to, to uh, be working with her. She's got an amazing, amazing mission and I'm just so pumped for her. But this show is not about me. It's about you today. And so I, wanna, I want to have you on the show so that you can share this awesome, awesome story. So for those that don't know who Monica Klein is, let's go back from the beginning. How'd you get in? What industry are you in? How'd you get into the industry? And talk to us about that journey, you know, coming up to 2018. Oh, it's been a long road. It's been a long time coming and I'm excited about launching and working with you. Um, let's see, I started in corporate America. I worked for a couple of great Fortune 500 companies. I was more so in, I'm a natural born salesperson, if you will. And I found myself in the world of corporate and high tech. And as great as the industry was, I wasn't fulfilled. I just really, I lacked, I lacked that leaving, waking up in the morning, so excited. And, you know, I worked for some big major names that look good on your resume. But I'm like, as you have shared, do you want to wake up at 40, 50 years old saying this is where you retired from and what you did as, as great as it may be and a great paycheck? Is that the life I want to live? So fast forward, um, I took, I was fortunate enough to take somewhat of a sabbatical and this is back in, um, gosh, 01. And I researched and did my due diligence and I stopped a company that was very female centric um, in the beauty world. Um, I just, I wanted to be surrounded by impactful, powerful women and be able to travel. And mm. so I stayed with them for about 14 years. I had a little break in between and I just, I wanted to explore doing things on my own and just as luck would have it, they brought me back in, they offered me my same position and I couldn't say no. The offer was too pretty to pass up. So, and it was a lot of international travel, and my goal at this point was to travel the world, see a lot more of what the world had to offer, which really has led me to where I am today. So, fast forward, I'm living in LA. I'm born and raised in Southern California, actually I'm from Newport Beach, and it's a little bit of, um, people think it's a very privileged lifestyle there, but I definitely, I worked hard. I worked my ass off to get where I was, and turn of events. I end up in New York City. And so I left that company and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I'm like, I'm in New York. Anything can happen here. And so I've been in New York for almost four and a half years. And about four years ago, one of my mentors, and she was a peer, she was a colleague, she was a mentor, she just, and we were dear, dear friends. 
um, she saw me go through a lot in my career and she was my number one cheerleader. She said, you need to have your first voice in everything you're doing. You are there supporting these large, large organizations. You are doing so much for so many and you're losing sight of your personal identity. And in the beauty business, it's very cutthroat, as I'm sure we're, we're seeing today with all these Me Too movement happening. But back then, when we were seeing it, we really, I saw a lot of things that should not happen in the beauty industry, whether it's from modeling to endorsements to anything, just anything beauty related. And it was a great career but I wanted to make a difference and I did not feel I was making a difference with where I was and what I was doing. I knew there was more out there. So my girlfriend at this point, um, she had opened her own company and she kept saying, let's go off and open an agency and let's do, you know, we're both from LA. We have the contacts. Um, and it never happened. She got sick. I moved to New York. We were on different paths. She had been married, she had grown children, and I had the stars in my eyes about living in New York City. And so I came here literally not really knowing what I was going to do and looking for jobs. And I said, I just, I wasn't passionate about it. So this is how identity came to fruition. And then I researched a lot from there and I found, oh, I did like two years worth of research because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> and I found you and I interviewed. Um, three different branding agencies and you aligned with what my my values were and my integrity and I wanted somebody to help launch my brand and everybody kept saying throw something out there and put up a website launch your social media and I refused mm. my girlfriend my mentor Tammy she just said don't lose your identity do it the way you want to do it and I stayed true to that and that's why I, sh I probably should have really launched like four years ago, but I've taken the slow path and I have no regrets for doing it in a slow, methodical, systematic way. I'm very methodical when it comes to launching, especially something as personal as your own brand and your own company. Mm, I love so it. How we got to um, today, to identity. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and, and this mentor that you have, a lot of what you do today is dedicated to her. Huh, yes, and I will do. I'm I'm um I'm a tough cookie, so I'm told. Um, I'm very tenacious, but I do have a very um emotional. I will do my best not to get emotional on this part. But so Tammy, through the years, she was very much a, a quiet person in the background of my life, and I would have private dinner parties at my home, and she was always a part of it. And there was just a very small group of those confidants that you have that they cross the lines they blur from your friend to your client to your colleague and she was one of them and all through the years there was certain points in my career that I could not be as public with our friendship as I wanted to be but she was a very well-known publicist in Los Angeles she dealt with a lot of A-list Hollywood um, and it was it was tough on occasion but she was always there supporting me um, mentoring me, giving me feedback on everything. And if it wasn't for her, I don't think my career would have gone the direction it did. So um, fast forward, I moved to New York and every visit back to LA, I'd pop in, I'd visit, I'd stay with her. We would brainstorm about what I was going to do to make a difference. And at this point, her health took a turn for the worse. We were, were a couple years apart. And I did not know she withheld information from me. And, and I look back and there's some days where you can get really angry, but I really cherish the times that we spent and parting knowledge that she instilled in me. And she just said, you have voice, make a difference. Don't do what so many others are doing. We've seen what not to do. We've seen lead people that have led by bad examples. And we sat down and we were, we were actually laying in her bed because she was, she was really sick at this point. And we just wrote out everything it is that we want to instill on not just women, but on some of the young girls. So with identity, when I manage talent, I'm not an, not an agent, I'm not a publicist, I'm a brand manager. I manage women in the beauty lifestyle arena. 
And Tammy and I sat and we wrote down everything that we wanted to impart on these, on these girls and no matter what age. And so that was the birth of identity. So I do, I honor her memory. She, unfortunately she passed away um, June, 2015 Mm -hmm. and I immediately filed my LLC and opened my bank account and I called her husband and he is, he is now one of my biggest cheerleaders. I talk to John all the time. I get beautiful notes of encouragement from him. Um, it's like still hearing from Tammy, but through her husband. And it's just, it's a, it's a bit, I wish she were here to see it. My very first client I signed for Identity, who just turned 13 last week. And so when I signed her, she was uh, 10. Mm. And, and she's going big places. Her name is Sophia. She's an aspiring model, actress. And it's nice because that's how I feel the legacy of Tammy is living on through some of the clients that I've signed. So that's, um, that's my inspiration and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I love it. I love it. And, and, and that's, I made it such a point to, to bring that out because, you know, people will connect with, like you said, the way we connected was by our values, our values aligned. Uh, what I was doing was aligning with what you were doing and, and that's how we connected. And we just, that consistent message that I kept putting out there kept resonating, kept resonating. Eventually you reached out. So, you know, I reason the reason why I want to start this episode out by sharing your why and sharing where all this came from is because I know people that are listening and watching are going to connect with it at some level. And so, you know, I appreciate you sharing that story as emotional as it, as it was for you. And so I want to move on to the sort of the next frame or the next phase of the, of the show, because a lot of people are getting excited about, um, building their identity, building their brand identity into this strong, powerful, I, you know, organism. Cause I look at brands as living organisms. They're not just, they're not just businesses. You know, what you put into your brand is what you're going to get out of your brand. And so, you know, I have, I, I see Victor here in Facebook. He's already got the question blaring, you know, he, he says, how do I build a strong brand identity if what I do isn't sexy? You know, I sell properly structured whole life insurance to business owners. <laughs> so that's a tough one, Victor. You know, there really isn't much sexiness to that. But I wanted to get into, I wanted to ask your opinion and your suggestion on what is it? Like what creates and builds a strong brand identity? It's rapport with your potential clients. It's with your network. It is, it's where your values are based. Um, I, as, as you know, as with working with me, um, I am, you know, three years old. I don't have a website. I don't have social media. I don't advertise. I don't do any of these live things. I am all about the personal touch. And I'm happy to admit I have 15 thriving clients. How do I get those 15 thriving clients? My reputation, um, my, it, I'm a little bit aggressive sometimes, but I, am, I network like crazy and I keep those relationships intact. And, and my group, my quote unquote tribe, as people would say, whether it's personal or business, I'm still always connecting with them, whether it's through um, a, an Instagram post about a tr- travel or a restaurant or I think there's a way to connect with everybody out there. And so I'm completely right now word of mouth. I'm excited and looking forward to see what's going to happen once you fully launch my brand. But I think in order to really, if it's life insurance or whatever that is, quote unquote, unsexy, um, it's just, it's relationship building. It's being constant. I, you know, what is it? Six or seven times to touch somebody before you become memorable. I like to shorten that because I'm very impatient. I like to shorten that to three times. I want to touch somebody three times and then I want them to remember me. I want to leave a lasting impression. And what is that? Is it, it's you're being personable, you're paying attention to what they're looking for. You're tapping into that, I don't want to say emotional sale, but that's what, it's human contact. And in today's world, I think that's gone away a lot. And people still want to be touched. They still want that, the handwritten thank you note or the pick the phone and make a phone call. And I think, especially, I mean, I represent some influencers who are just about behind their screen and, and their posts and what they're writing and their blogging, I still have that hands-on with everyone. 
And this is how I've been able to grow with zero as a branding company. I've had zero branding out there for myself mm. and I'm able to grow because of that personal touch. So, I love it. I, I, I love that. And to piggyback on that, I, I definitely, I want to, I want to help Victor out as well by saying, you know, how to build that brand identity is by definitely looking yourself in the mirror and asking yourself, how would I want to be communicated with? How would I want to be treated? What do, yeah. what, what do I value as a great uh, experience? You know, branding is not just the way your business looks. It's how your business feels to yes. that person. And so when you're selling whole life insurance, you know, that's a pretty touchy subject, right? Nobody really wants to talk about dying and what's going to happen after and who's going to be taken care of and who's. So there's a lot of empathy there that I think, if, Victor, if you apply um, to, to, your, to the folks that you're selling to, um, and, and instead of being on the opposite side of the table, but being on their side of the table, you know, just by doing something that simple, by sitting next to your prospect versus sitting across from them, exactly. that, that goes a long way because, listen, at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of folks that look at selling and they think that the client and the seller are like at, at battle with each other. And it, and, it really, and it really doesn't need to be that way. I always tell my clients, you know, when you're positioning your brand, when you're positioning your business to your audience, you want to be trust. You want to be looked at as the trusted advisor. You want to be looked at as the fiduciary. You want to be looked at as somebody that they can pick up the phone and call and feel like they could tell you anything, and you're gonna and you're gonna be there for them. So, focusing on that and building that reputation, that 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 uh, connection, right, with your audience. That's one step to building a, an extremely strong brand identity. So I appreciate you, you, you saying that. So, so now it's, it's 2018 and we are in the process of building out your brand and, and really bringing it to life and really bringing it live, if you will, um, and, and to the market uh, online. And so who are the, the clients that you're typically working with now and how are you providing value to them, you know, with your uh, identity management brand management company? Um, let's see. I am I have a very special niche. I am, my clients are anybody from, okay, so I say beauty, fashion, lifestyle. So who is that? That could be my clients range today from eight years old to 60 years old. So let's just take my 60 year old. She's um, a travel influencer, very philanthropic. And right now the campaign we're working on is for all of her philanthropy. She's unfortunately had some, some closest people to her that she's lost. She's very passionate and she wants to turn this into something that will benefit the charities that she supports. So that's her brand. My youngest client is eight years old. She is an aspiring actress, dancer, singer. She's amazing. I signed her when she was seven. and We've been working together for almost a little over a year now. And I just, I love working with these young talent. They just, they're sponges and I can teach them so much because of my, my history, my resume, if you will. Um, so influencers, bloggers, celebrity chefs. Uh, TV anchors, um, anybody that's in the, the beauty, fashion, fashion designers, models, um, anything in that arena, that's who I represent. That's my background. That's my knowledge. Um, I'm going on, I hate to admit, I think 20 years <laughs> so, of, of being in this type of industry. Mm. And some days I feel like it's aged me. <laughs> and some days I'm so... I'm so grateful. I have an amazing, diverse group of clients in this industry. And, you know, you, you want to go to a fashion show or get into the best restaurant. Those are my clients. That's who I service. It's usually a personal brand that I am building for them. And it's somebody that wants to be in the spotlight. Um, so there's a bit of an ego, but I don't deal with egos. My clients are real. They're people. They're humans. They're down to earth. They're compassionate. And that's the thing in doing all the things in the past that I knew weren't the right things. I knew who I wanted to work with. 
I knew my demographic. And fortunately, I was at least old enough to know better and to learn to say no to certain people that they weren't a good match. Mm -hmm. So I have amazing 15 clients right now that I'm so happy to work with. But they're more than clients. They become family and friends. They're an extension of you because you too, you get those late night phone calls if there's something going on with family. And it has nothing to do with building their brand, but I need to know those things. I need to know everything. It's all encompassing. It is not just, okay, we're focused on this and what's the next modeling job or the next endorsement. Um, I, I do. I cross the lines and blur the lines all the time. And some people may think that may be unethical, but when you represent clients of this stature, it's not, it's just, it's, it's part of Trade. Yeah, it's like you become you become part of them. I mean, like when I'm when I'm building brands for my clients, I'm immersing myself into their business. I want I need to know everything from up to down to left to right to to understand and and feel what it is that they're going through because that's going to give me the creative and my teams the creative to really take what it is that's in your head and make it a reality. And so what I want to dive into next is. And I, I love that you work with personal brands because I look at my roster and, and, and a, a majority of my client roster are personal brands as well. And my question is, uh, in, from your perspective, what are some of the challenges that these folks are facing uh, and how do you help them overcome those challenges? <sighs> That's a good one. Um, <laughs> You know, it's funny because I've been really thinking about this since our last conversation. Um, I feel they come to me, again, I touched on the personal part, but because of my experience and I'm able to help them with their challenges due to who I know and how I know them and the relationship building that I've done. So if they have a challenge, they could seek out. There's so many great brand managers out there. There's so many great agents out there, but they're coming to me to be exposed to, I'm not a millennial. I'm not um, starting out my career and they get that. And that's when they bond with me at that level. That's where I can help them overcome whatever those challenges are. I don't always, I'm not going to say that I am a miracle maker, but I definitely have pulled some rabbits out of the hat on a few occasions. So this is where I think they want somebody more experienced um, with that kind of a database. That's why they, they end up signing with me to avoid or divert what that challenge may be with somebody just starting out. So I think that's the biggest reason why. The biggest, if they have a challenge, that's why they're working with me. I see. So is it more of a, like they don't know how to break into the, the industry that they want to penetrate? Yes, it is very much. Or they don't have the they don't know how to break into it or the training per se. And I do the first two levels of what I offer is complete training. I have a team of a great team of specialists I work with in every area. And so I bring that entire team in to sign them up for trainings and that's where they start with me. So Got I want where they're well versed on what they're trying to break into or get reacquainted with what they want to get back into. And so for those that are looking to build a a strong personal brand and they're looking for some tips, you know, every episode, you know, and then every guest I have on, on the show, I want, I want them to sort of deliver, you know, three nuggets, three, you know, three take homes that they can, they can work on, um, immediately or apply immediately. What are, so when you do this training with your clients, like what are, what are three biggies what are three big takeaways that i that you could that you share with them and that you could you could share with us today to help them sort of get their their identity rolling in the right direction um education that's the first thing i want them to be well versed the first part of the training day one we spend about four hours educating them as to what the basics are what is an agent versus a manager versus a publicist in the beauty fashion lifestyle arena um, and then from there, I want to inspire them. I want to teach them what is, what's your personal brand? Tell me who you want to be and what you want to do and why you want to do this. I want to get inside their head to develop what that is. I mean, you know this, if there's an incomplete psychology behind this and I really break it down and map it out. I'm very systematic as well. 
So there is, you know, 10 steps. We come up with what their personal mission statement is. There is, um, if they want to be a model, why? It's an extremely competitive industry. Why do they want to break into it? What makes them different? So I really, I educate, I inspire, and then we, our goal is to influence whoever their target demographic is. So for instance, um, I have a, a teenage client and she really relates to the Southern California surf skate lifestyle and we want to penetrate that. So how do you become an influencer in that industry in today's world? It's not marketing. It's not um, advertorials. Um, it is social media. It's your YouTube. It's what are we going to do to keep you on the cutting edge? So these are all the things that I work with my clients on and that is broken into a very in-depth training. Um, and like I said, it starts at the basics and it works its way all the way up. Mm. So that's, um, I, just, I believe in educating them. And I think too many don't invest in themselves to be able to launch their brand. They think they can become an overnight sensation or be discovered on the street. And unfortunately, it's not that simple anymore. Yeah. Maybe the seventies or eighties, but it's, it's definitely, it's not that marketplace. Social media has changed the game. And they need to stay on top of what that is in order, in order to be noticed or recognized in today's world. Yeah, and I want to add to that. I think that's very important to stay, uh, you know, stay in front of the trends or stay on trend and market and 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 be market in the age that you're marketing in. Like you know, I see so many you know offline brands and you know mom and pops and brick and mortars that they're still you know they're still marketing like it's 1998, right? Uh, and, and, and they're wondering why they're not getting the attention that they need, right. To, to stay in business. Right. But the one thing that I want to piggyback on what you were saying is in regards to getting on social media and influencing who it is that they want to uh, become part of that, that I want to say relevancy plays a huge, huge role here. Like if you're not, if you're not communicating a relevant, like like connection between your audience and and your brand there's going to be a huge disconnect there and so you know it how do you become relevant right how do you stay relevant you know i see a lot of uh baby boomers struggling now trying to speak to the millennials because they just don't understand the language they don't understand the the mentality and and i and i have to tell you you really have to start paying attention to relevancy and how, how do you become relevant? Well, you study them, yep. you research them, you understand why they do what they do, when they do what they do with who they do it with. Like I just said it on, on a recent podcast. I said 70% 70, 70 of my time is on research, looking at what entrepreneurs truly want. Yes. What what business owners are truly challenging, or, or or what their challenges truly are, you know, and and there's a common denominator there, you know, as as an entrepreneur, you know, both of us we want more time, we want more clients, you know, we want more uh, free time, you know what I mean? We want everything, um, and so how do we get that, you know? Because I, does somebody wake up one day and say? I'm going to hire a branding agency today. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they don't wake up and say that. So no. you know, when you, I had to learn that the hard way. When my business started to tank, I was like, well, what are they waking up asking for? Yeah. You know, and it was, it was, you know, they want to hire the right people. You know, all these different indirect things that I could help them with, but I wasn't explaining it right. I wasn't being relevant enough for them to say, you know what, I should pay attention to that Henry guy because he's actually, uh, I think he's onto something. I think he's like hiding underneath my bed because he's, he's, spe he's speaking to what it is that I'm thinking every day. When you start to connect with your audience that way, the game's going to change. And so that's why when, we see, when you watch my copywriter go to town on your, on your work, you know, and you start to read what it is that he is creating for you based on, you know, the intake forms that you're filling out for me now, you're going to see all of that transpire and you're going to see how that connects. That's why I was stressing to you, you know, the other day, like 
we really got to put a lot of emphasis into these copywriting intake forms because my copywriter needs to get juiced. He needs to get fired up. He needs to feel like he is like inside. inside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so when, when, when he gets intake forms that are filled out like in depth, he's like, ah, I can, you know, watch, watch what happens. And so, and that's, and, and, and he's trying to relate. He's trying to be, create that relevancy between what it is that you do, that problem that you solve and the problems that they're facing every single day. You get that connection. It's, it's, it's a home run. And, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk and he talks about how he day trades attention. Well, in 2018, it's all about attention, you know? If you don't have your audience's attention, you don't have a business and you don't have a brand. So, you know, so in education, inspiring and influencing, I love it. I think it's, it's a, it's a must. And if you don't have this implemented inside of your business right now, um, you better because (laughs) you're going to have a hard time getting to the next level and getting through the next few years because as technology increases, and improves and competition becomes more thick. Like, what are you going to do? Exactly. You know, the whole goal of my three major things to touch with every client is as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, I want to leave a legacy. I don't, I, I have things I want to accomplish personally and professionally. I want every one of my clients, I want to tap into what that means to them. And so this is where their brand really stands out. I want them to be different. I want to see what the end result is going to be. Whether it's my eight-year-old or my six-year-old, what's your legacy? What do you want to leave to your family, your friends, whoever that may be? That's like one of the most important things. Um, part of, when I lost my, my mentor, Tammy, I lost my mom shortly thereafter within several months of that. And I think two of the most important women in my life and losing them taught me to start to be, I've kind of never really been very fear-based, but that really drove me to the point of, I have nothing to lose. Mm. Go for it. Mm. And what legacy do I want to leave when I'm not here anymore? Mm. And so that's what I, I really convey to my clients. I'm like, what is it? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be remembered for? And to me, that's, that's a sign of a good life, right? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I feel like, you know, we can't take anything with us. When we, when we leave, right? So like, why not create something for, you know, our, our children or for a community, a tribe, hundreds and thousands of people to remember us by? Like, uh, listen, we're only on this planet for two minutes when you look at the big picture. And so how do you want to be remembered? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And, and people like to make mountains out of molehills all the time. And I always try to say, I, I did an Instagram post. Um, I found on one of my, one of the, the, the pages that I follow and it was like the five by five rule. Huh? Yeah. And, and basically he said, you know, if I got to read it, hold on. It's, it's, if it doesn't, is it, it's doesn't right. Have- yeah. Uh, let me see. Five years. Yeah. Five by oh, five. Five, five. Yeah. Years. If it's, if, it, <laughs> if it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes being upset by it. Yes. I, I just think that's brilliant. And mm-hmm. so at the end of the day, you're building this legacy, but I, what inspires me about you is that you're building your own thing, but you are your clients. You're instilling this into each and every one of your clients and they're getting out there and inspiring and others. And that, that turns into a web that turns into like a compound effect that turns into this, this massive movement really of, and, and like the young ones that you, that you bring on board, you know, they're good. They're our future, Yes. you know, and they have a hell of a, mentor uh behind them so that is that's awesome that what you're doing and and i really appreciate you 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 coming on the show today and just sharing your 20 plus years experience in the industry and really providing that value to us because at the end of the day 
when we think brand identity, I think a lot of us think logo, they think website, they think, you know, business cards and all of that stuff, but it's truly the feeling that you leave behind and, and, and what is it that they say about you when you're not in the room? Exactly. It's exactly what it is. No. So any parting words? Um, be authentic, be yourself. That's my number one thing. Just, I mean, I, I think in all my years in trying to conform to what people thought or would want you to be, I learned the hard way on a lot of those things. So now it's all about humility and being authentic because you don't know who's watching. Mm -hmm. And that is what is going to attract your next client when you don't even realize it. Yeah. I'm going to add to that. You, you never know who you're inspiring either. Yes. True. So get out there, put your best foot forward, do your best. And you know what? Try not to care too much about uh, what other people think. You know, it's, it's smart to take feedback and it's smart to take, you know, uh, suggestion as long as it's valid. You exactly. know what I mean? So ask yourself, and I, I want to leave, uh, this is so, this is so recent. I had a co I had a ment uh, a coaching call with my mentor yesterday, and he and he said to me he said um, uh, you he's now been with me for a while now and he said you know you're like an emotional roller coaster you he's like you got a lot of energy and he's like I gotta help you ch channel that okay you know and he said I want you to ask yourself these three questions um, the next time you start to get fired up or you start to feel like you're down in the dumps. He said, if somebody says something to you, you want to ask yourself first, is it fact or is this an opinion? The second question you want to ask yourself is, is what I'm hearing going to build confidence in me and courage or is it going to make me feel insecure? Okay. And then the third question is is this going is this information going to help me or hurt me and very quickly you will find yourself and i i started doing it immediately you're going to find yourself reacting a lot differently to what happens to you yes then not you know but not asking yourself these three questions and because i i have a tendency Maybe I get this from my wife, but I have a tendency to, to, to react quickly, you know, and when you pause and you ask yourself those three questions, it's, it's amazing what the, what the outcome is, how you respond. And, you know, it's not what happens to you at the end of the day. It's how you respond. Absolutely. So anyway, Monica, it's a pleasure. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a late Friday afternoon. We got some happy hour to hit. So <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show today and, and being part of it. And again, sharing your knowledge and wisdom. And um, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future. And I'm here behind you every step of the way. I can't wait to launch your brand in the next few weeks and really guide you through the process and, and watch you grow because you are, you are a, a, a force. <laughs> you are a force and the world needs to see more of Monica Klein. So thanks again. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, so I respect and admire you. You're helping me do great things. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. So guys, real quick, if you haven't joined the Facebook group, the Brand Doctors Hangout, head over there right now and go check that out. There's a great group of entrepreneurs in there all helping each other build each other's business. And if you haven't subscribed or told a friend or a colleague about this podcast yet, uh, please do. And I totally appreciate it up front. Um, thanks again for listening. I'm here on a mission and I am not leaving until I inspire all of you guys to build a strong brand and I will do everything I possibly can to give you the strategies to do that, to help you live the life of your dreams and build the business that you want to build. So have an awesome day guys and I'll catch you on the next episode. Talk soon. You've been listening to the Brand Doctor Podcast with Henry Kaminsky Jr. To get your appointment with the doctor, visit Brand Audit at www.uniquedesigns.net.